Nancy Duarte is a well-known expert in presentation design and public speaking. She has authored several books on the subject, including Slide, Arlogy, The Art and Science of Creating Great Presentations, Resonate, Present Visual Stories That Transform Audiences, and Illuminate, Ignite Change Through Speeches, Stories, Ceremonies, and Symbols. While I don't have direct information on a book or talk by her titled, How to Tell a Story, post my last update in September 2021, I can share some insights from Duarte's general philosophy of storytelling that might be helpful. Start with the audience. Duarte emphasizes the need to understand the audience's perspective, their values, their desires, and their challenges. By understanding the audience, you can tailor your story to their needs and perspectives. Structure is key. A well-structured story is more likely to resonate with the audience. Duarte often references the classic three-act structure, beginning, middle, end, found in literature and film. She also discusses the idea of creating a dynamic between what is and what could be, oscillating between the current reality and the potential future to build tension and engage the audience. Use visuals. As a specialist in presentation design, Duarte is a strong advocate for the power of visuals to tell a story. She encourages presenters to move beyond bullet points and text, to use diagrams, charts, images, and other visual elements to bring their stories to life. Make it emotional. Duarte believes that stories should connect with the audience on an emotional level. By tapping into the audience's feelings, you can make your story more memorable and impactful. Call to action. Every good story, according to Duarte, should lead to a clear call to action. The story should inspire and motivate the audience to take some specific action. These points provide a broad understanding of Nancy Duarte's perspective on storytelling. If you're interested in more specific techniques or strategies, I recommend checking out her books and presentations, which provide a wealth of practical advice and examples. Story is very important. If you look at the actual structure of the story, it's been used for thousands of years for cultures to pass on their morals and their lore and their values. Even pre-literate generations could pass those on and it stay fully intact. So the powerful thing about story is it, it demonstrates transformation and humans are hardwired to enjoy observing transformation. We've got the four seasons, we've got stories that are told that show transformation. We're hardwired to enjoy it. What happens is when someone tells a story, specifically a story of transformation, we're connected heart to heart. And those stories, because of its inherent structure, are easily repeated and passed along. It's not very often you can think of, oh, that last presentation I can practically repeat it, it stays intact, it just doesn't happen. But it does happen with story. So we need to use this as a tool to make sure that our stories are passed on and people have a way to spread our ideas through story. Great stories will resonate with an audience. When you're sitting and listening to a really great story, your physical body is reacting to it. You don't even realize it. You can get a chill down your spine, your heart may race. Your eyes actually dilate so you can take more in. The power of a great story is how it connects us, how it makes us feel. It's also how um, in that connection, as we root for that hero to get over their roadblocks and emerge transformed, we are changed in the process. So story isn't just about observing change, it's about applying the learnings from that story to our own self um, to make sure that we too are transformed in some way through the power of story. Sometimes as a leader, we're supposed to be the one that's strong, we're supposed to be the one there keeping it all together, and it's a struggle to be so authentic and so transparent to tell personal stories. People are like, well, I'm here at work to get my job done. I'm not here to get emotional or I'm not here to, you know, um, I've got a whole lot of other things instead of that. And I contend that, that um, you would be a better leader should you stop and have these very human moments, these very human connections, right? It's like ants, right? They come together, they go doo -doo -doo -doo, and then they, they know where to go and they just keep going in those kinds of moments that you do where you connect deeply with these people not only builds people's loyalties to you, it builds them to the brand, but the interesting thing is they align more quickly and you get so much more done doing these little moments of emotional connection and using story to make those moments of connection makes it even more powerful and uh, 
keeps the organization healthy and strengthens you as a leader. I define happiness as contentment, and the moments that I'm most content are when I'm connecting deeply and personally with other people. So spending time with people that I really love and admire and people who get me makes me super happy.